Hey guys, it's Rainer from the USAF Mod, and uh, this is going to be a tutorial on using the new 3D service menu we released with version 1.0. Uh, this is going to be a two-part tutorial, kind of. Uh, the first part is going to be just how to use the service menu in general for all players, and then I'll go into how to set it up uh, for mission builders in your mission. So first up, I just want to go over the different ways to get into the service menu. Uh, this has changed significantly from the previous version, so I kind of want to go over that. Uh, let's hop into our A10. So one major change since the last version is that the action to get into the service menu is no longer on the aircraft itself. It's actually on each individual object, so you'll need to look at a service menu source in order to access the service menu. Also, in order to access the service menu, your engine has to be off, so keep that in mind. So the first um, way to get into it is via a hangar. By default, these have all the services available, and you can just look at anywhere on the geometry um, to get into the menu. I'm going to skip over to the uh, missile cart on my left now. This is a missile cart from the USAF mod. We have several different varieties of these with different weapons but the cart is always the same so keep an eye out for that and that'll tell you that that's one of ours uh, these by default always have all services as well on my left here then we have some uh, containers now these are the same model but these are actually custom usaf classes and each container there has one service on it so One's rearm, one's repair, and refuel. So if you see all three, that means you have all services, and if you only see one, just keep in mind it's only going to supply you with one service, and uh, each of those has the action as well. On the right, we have the vanilla trucks. Um, by default, these actually don't have the service menu on them, but the uh, mission builder can either with a CBA option or with modules place the USAF menu on them in which case you will see the, uh, the service menu option and just like the containers um, each one supplies their own uh, service. Uh, something just to bear in mind as a player um, if the USAF service menu is placed on these trucks they won't function as a vanilla service point because that would supersede our service menu so just keep in mind, if you switch over to, over to a uh, land vehicle or another aircraft without the uh, USAF service menu set up for it, uh, the trucks with the USAF service menu uh, won't work for you. And that's really it. As a player, um, you're just going to select one of these service menu options and click, and you are in your menu. And uh, next up, I'm going to go over the interface. So, starting off with, uh, I'll just go down the interface here, starting the top left, we have the controls, so C is in Charlie, we'll reset the camera to the front, so you can easily see all your pylons. Uh, N will change these uh, view mode, night vision and off. Left mouse button, right mouse button, same as Arsenal, view and pan, um, should be pretty intuitive. Uh, there's a flat pan on the hold middle mouse button which will move the camera in the axis that's always parallel to the the wing so you can quickly move down your pylons here as you're setting up your aircraft then we have the scroll wheel for zoom of course and escape for exit so i'll hop over to the f-22 real quick to show you these buttons these buttons will uh, run different animations on the aircraft uh, we got flaps, lights, and we can toggle the bays in the service menu uh, to make sure we can see inside there and uh, make sure everything's good. Uh, you can also open the canopy and the refuel door, that kind of stuff. Um, some of these are default, like all aircraft are going to have flaps and lights and uh, possibly bays. But then mod authors can add additional animations via config that will show up here and uh, then you can toggle those animations. Moving up to our top bar here. This is the most exciting part, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, the new service menu now takes into account individual services, and these buttons will indicate the status of each service. Um, they're all green right now because I'm next to a hangar, but if I'm next to an ammo truck or 
um, a, a container with only the refuel service on it, um, then only that one will be green and the others will be red indicating that service is not available. Top we have our um, aircraft name and mod author name of course. And top right we have our quit and set name button. Set name allows you to um, put text on the side of the aircraft for your name or call sign whatever. You can apply white or black lettering and there's also an option to do so on the tail and you get your text on the side of the aircraft. Moving down, we have the kind of the meat and potatoes of the menu here. Um, these buttons right here are essentially submenus within this box right here. Let's just go down from the top. I'm gonna do preset loadouts. And these are the same loadouts that you're gonna see in Eden or uh, the Zeus Ace configure pylons or whatever. Um, but in addition to that, users can create and edit their own pre presets for the pylons. So if we were to go into loadout, like I'll do in a minute, change the pylons and then hit create, they can set, you can set up your, uh, your preset, Rainers, wow, Rainers, cast loadout, save. I can also import from clipboard to uh, speed things along if I'm bringing it in, and there it is at the bottom. I already did one earlier, as you can see. Uh, you can edit the loadout, rename it, export it to the clipboard, all that fun stuff, and delete it. And that's pretty much it for preset loadouts. The tooltip will show you exactly what's in that loadout before you load it up. All right, moving on to the loadout page. This is where you'll configure each individual pylon. As you can see, each pylon has its number, and an icon over it and you can either click that number or you can come over to the hard point list and click on the hard point there. So either double clicking in the list here or clicking on the pylon here will uh, select that pylon for editing and then we'll show you a list of all the available munitions for that pylon. And you just double click to load that up and you're all set. Real quick, I'll mention this drop-down, logical or alphabetical sorting. Um, essentially, that just means that any list you have in here can be sorted by these two methods. So say you, instead of seeing one GBU, two GBU, that kind of thing, you want to see all of the 3x racks together. You can sort by alphabetical, scroll down to three, and they're all right here. So it just gives you some more customization on how you navigate. And then we're going to come down to paint jobs, pretty straightforward. These are, of course, all configurable within the uh, config. So this will load up any paint jobs that the mod author has uh, specified. Got a few for the hog here, the usual desert and all that stuff. Good deal. And then I'll just mention the uh, Return and select buttons here are essentially just next and previous. Select will select whatever you have selected, <laughs> of course. And then return will, if you're in a pylon, will just take you back out to the, the hard point selection. So just another way to navigate that menu. And then finally, coming down to the bottom of the screen, we have our fuel status and our repair status. And these are the fuel refuel and repair buttons right here. Real quick, I will back out and set our aircraft to be slightly damaged and slightly low on fuel. And as you can see, it will uh, show your percentage and then when you hit these buttons, it will start the process of getting you refueled and repaired. And while these are running, you can of course go out and work on your preset or your paint job or whatever you like. And as you can see, we have a little notification text here. Anytime you finish a repair or a fuel or um, your services change, you now have access or now don't have access to a, a service, it'll um, pop up a little message here saying that uh, something has changed. 
So that's pretty much it for the menu itself. Next up, I'm going to go into how to set up your mission to use the USAF service menu. See you there. All right, so this next section is going to cover setting up your mission to uh, make the USAF service menu available to your pilots and uh, show you all the different ways to do so and the different options um, to set your uh, level of realism. First up, we have a service menu section in the uh, Blue 4 USAF faction, and these are uh, missile carts, and these missile carts by default have um, all services available on them. So any aircraft that is near this missile cart will have all services available. They just look at the cart and press service menu. So that's an easy way. Um, if you don't want to use those, we also have another option. If we come over here to props and then USAF service menu, we also have uh, containers and these are each individual service. So you can specify which services are available at that location uh, where you can transport the containers or whatever you want to do. And that is the containers all right, then we also have some modules which you can add to any, you can sync to any object um, and allow that object to function as a service menu. Uh, you can either uh, use the full service menu or you can specify which services they have. You can mix and match those, all or nothing, or just some of them. Um, so what you would do is you would, uh, you can drop the, cert the module here and then we'll, uh, let's say we want to put it on a, yeah, we'll put it on a, uh, a ground power unit here. Why not? So you then uh, right click, connect, sync to, and click on the object, or vice versa. And now that object has a service menu available on it. So another option uh, just to help you build things quickly is this uh, the service menu, or the service compositions. So this one, when you put it down, it will actually run a little script in Eden and will create the required modules and the trucks all synced up how uh, they need to be. So you can quickly drop those into your missions. And then these trucks would function as service points. And then finally, um, by default, every hangar in the game is a service menu by default. So any aircraft that uh, drives up to this hangar is going to be able to access a service menu. So now that we have a few ways to get the uh, service menus available on the map, I want to go ahead and go into our CBA settings. So you're, in Eden, you can go to settings and then add-on options and select USAF in the add-on dropdown. And you're going to see the service menu uh, section here. So I'm just going to go um, by through each one and uh, talk about it enabled. It's just a master switch. If this is off, no service menus will be available anywhere in the mission. So if you want to lock down what uh, players can access for uh, loadouts and everything, um, this is what you can hit to just totally lock it down. Um, then these next three options are for hangers. They specify which service services will be available at all hangers by default. Next up we have Replace Vanilla Auto Service, and what this does is it replaces the vanilla service on um, repair and refuel and ammo trucks, vanilla trucks, and replaces it with the USAF service menu. And the reason we do this is because if we don't disable the vanilla service, any aircraft can just drive up to an ammo truck and instantly repair and refuel and rearm. So, uh, this checkbox will allow you to prevent players from doing that. Just keep in mind that uh, the, the vanilla services won't be available. All right, allow pylon configuration. Pretty straightforward. If this is off, players will not be able to configure the pylons via the USAF service menu. They can still uh, repair, refuel, change the paint job, all that fun stuff, but they can't change the... Um, they can't change the individual pylons. They can still change the, they can load preset loadouts. So they can still change the loadout, but only to the presets is essentially what that does. Um, pylon reload time is a modifier that indicates um, how long it will take for each pylon to reload. 
um, you know, d the delay for each pylon. So if you wanted to make a really, really realistic mission, you could set this to <laughs> several minutes to each pylon or whatever. Um, however realistic you want to make it. Quick note, as of version 1.0, when this is being recorded, this does not function yet. It's just a placeholder for when we get that going. And then uh, refuel time multiplier and repair time multiplier, same deal. It just, um, if you remember back to the service menu, the bars along the bottom, that indicates how long it will take to uh, refuel and repair based on just the default values. And that is pretty much it. All right, so that's all there is to it, really. Um, we hope that all these options and vehicles um, really let you dictate how the service menu is presented in your mission and uh, what players can and can't do. And we hope that you know it lets you uh, 